previously on Lost. I'm on it. Of course, he has an ability that lets him strike back. He has somehow gained some extra health. An ability that lets him strike back. Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated continuing on with my Frankie Donovan run. Just barely, though, because two episodes back, not on the last one, but the one beforehand, Frankie Donovan got a good baiting when we went up against Maggie Dyer. And at one point in time during the combat, Frankie had about 16, 19 hit points, and it looked like he had some health shot into him with a shotgun. And I was confused at the time what had gone on, and I thought it was maybe a bug. Kind of felt a bit disappointed. But on watching the video back, uh, when I was editing, I saw that what tends to happen is when you click one of the options across the bottom for one of the characters to carry out an attack, it seems as though the calculation as to whether or not that attack hits and how much damage it does, that gets executed first of all, and then the animation begins. So sometimes you'll see the damage wafting into the air besides the character that gets hit before the character attacking them actually even fires the weapon. And that's what happened the last day is that um, a cat has nine lives wafted into the air before the character shooting at Frankie actually even began their animation. And then when you looked back at Frankie, uh, you just see him gaining health. If we click on Frankie quickly, there's Frank, our new addition. There's Frankie Knuckles. And there is, a cat has nine lives once per combat. If an attack would kill this person, they instead bounce back with 20% HP. So that's what happened to Frankie the last day. Um, that means he went down three times in that combat. So a cat has nine lives, kicked in at one stage, and then he was uh, bleeding out twice more. So it is a damn good thing that we took this at the very start. Regardless of the amount of damage you take, you are now guaranteed to bleed out whenever your health reaches zero. So that gives us four turns to try to um, to stabilize them. You can see these blue traits, this green one, the orange one, and these two ones, they are all his starting traits. Because he's an immigrant, he has plus 10% movement. Uh, fled to America, plus 10% loyalty gain. So I mean like fled to America. That's an actual trait that characters can have. There's so many of these. I think there's too many of them. Brawny, brave, flirt. They make sense. But like stayed in school, fled to America, immigrant. I think there's too many of them and it gets it gets confusing. Uh, I had a feeling that Frankie had something that, that kept him alive. But I just couldn't remember what it was. Like I said in the last episode, we have gained Frank McCurlin. Uh, I said uh, that he was nicknamed Gat Crazy. It's Gat Goofy. It's even worse. His nickname was Gat Goofy because of the orgasmic joy he exhibited when firing his Gat. That's a, a description of McCurlin from um, TJ English's uh, history of the Irish-American mobster. And ironically enough, his first combat is going to be against his buddy Saltus. So Saltus and McCurlin ran what was known as the Saltus McCurlin gang from... I think 1923 onwards. I'm going to cover this combat just because it's McCurlin's first one, but from here on in, it's going to be... From here on in now, it's going to be just combat heavy, so I'm not too sure what I'm going to do in future. Uh, I might just do highlights of the combats. But for now, we'll see just how get crazy. No? Oh wait, no, I just marked this building. Attack! Quick, attack! Everyone blocks the door, and in they go. So a lot of these combats, there's only like two or three people in them. Generally, Frankie's able to bash their heads in. Not in this circumstance, however, because he doesn't actually have the range. These combats are terrible, where... Like, it's just laid out... What are we supposed to do here? Um, could have him run around the corner. Does he have a line of sight in that guy? No, he doesn't. Frank, what a great starting move for you, just in case anybody comes running in.
nicely done. There is Nora. Again. Oh, she could have actually shot that guy. That doesn't make a difference. And... Cyril. Now, Cyril, you're not the only one with a Tommy gun. You'd better shape up. Or with a submachine gun. Now. We'll get him to here. So, we should get him to here. He will kill... And then we can see down in the bottom, kills restore action points and reset the ability's cooldown. In he goes to unleash his quantity of fury. <laughs> and this time his fury did renew. Okay. Is it the first time you use it for combat? I don't know, is Jez getting... Yeah, is she progressing towards anything? I mean, not to talk over Frank to hear if we did hear Frank saying something for his first combat. Um, I don't know, is, is Jez actually gaining towards 10 kills, then 25 by uh, acting uh, with those attacks? But sure, do you know what? Doesn't make a difference. Um, what's this? This is a... This is a brewery. Do I want a brewery? Not really. We'll ransack it and see if we can get anything. Some money. I'm going to see here. These guys are, are looking at it. Are they going in? Oh, I think they got in ahead of us. The devils. So this is actually the building that Saltus took from me in the last episode. And I was hoping to get in there before them. So it, it appears as though they don't have to fight the outside guards, but I do. Uh, so they've either gone into the building or they've disappeared. Right away. They've either gone into the building or they haven't. I'm gonna break your face in. <laughs> yeah! That's what I'm fucking yes! talking about. Signs. Victory! Yeah. Frank seems to put his hand up to his mouth and start screaming. You can just about hear Frank very quietly in the background. Uh, what I want for this game, there's talks about modding this game. The first mod I want is one that renames everyone to Frank. I'm on it. Everyone in the game is Frank. Frank Salazar, Frank Quinn, except Cyril. Uh, so yes, it does look like they've they got to this building before us. God damn it, this was my building. Yeah, so the the Jennas took it. Um well there you go. I won't say that I'm lost for uh, things to do. I've no idea where this is. Uh we've just taken this over. I won't say that I'm lost for things to do, but I've come up to uh near north side. I'm gonna attack Saltus's building here. Unless this is the one that's just been taken over. Um, so near north side is the is the very last place that I that I moved into. I think I was up here looking at a couple of buildings. I might attack one of the minor factions here uh, later on. So we're we're pretty much just kind of waiting for this war to end. I won't say waiting for it to end, but I don't want to take on Reyna uh, before this war ends. And also the other issue is that um, I need to I need to attack Reyna to take a large brewery, or I can just acquire any other large brewery, but they are very expensive. So I did find a large derelict building, but to convert that into a brewery would have been about 8,000, so I have nowhere near the money. Let's take this over. Uh, let's keep it as a speakeasy. Confirm. And I'm going to name this one the Senate Bar after one of the Discord users who uh, gave me the name for Dan Petty Andes in the last episode. I think the Senate Bar is probably the only actual sensible name that I've given any of these buildings so far, so we will say okay to that. 
Um, we're heading up here to Available Racket Building, a brothel. Saltus loves his brothels. Lads running across the road in front of cars. Hmm. These guys are getting suspicious, or that guy is getting suspicious. I could auto-resolve. I'm afraid it'll do something crazy. I'm surprised that Frank is only a level 3. I have no idea what those numbers actually mean. Or what the colours mean. Or is I think the colour is the type of weapon. It is indeed. It is indeed. Or is it the most advanced piece of equipment? Because Jez is armed with a green waistcoat. Whereas Frankie has a... We wouldn't say purple. It's somewhere between purple and pink. Some kind of a neon purple. Uh, rifle. Wonderful. Got you. Do you know what? Look, I was gonna, I was gonna start messing around um, I'm on it. and trying to get people further up the list to uh, to, to get some kills off. We'll just, we'll just let Frankie just finish it. Yes, that's what I'm fucking yes. talking about. Fantastic. Victory. That's we, we want to go home early, Frankie. We want to go home early. Okay. So again, this could be a fairly easy enough uh, encounter. Right well, away. no, it is. They're all easy enough encounters. It's Come the boss me. battles that are the tough ones. <laughs> so we could just have him run back in. I will have him into his turn where he is. Uh, Jez. Start chipping some HP off of this one. Does Eddie have a? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. fucking talking about. Victory! That's the bee's knees. It sounds like Frank is in a different room to everyone else. So everyone else is there, like given their their victory speech at the end, and Frank is like in the next room searching for alcohol. Uh, Frank McCurlin, and he's just screaming. I don't know what the hell he's screaming. I can't hear him. But he's in a different room to everyone else. Is it that we just have so many people in the gang that we can't fit them all in one room? Or is it, like I said, he's just off looking for booze somewhere? Um, Frank Callahan. I'm just going to start calling everyone Frank. Frank Callahan has been awarded the Steadfast Aim trait. And we've taken over a brothel. Somebody's already started earning their money. Take the loot. We'll take it over. And we will keep it as a brothel. So the last building was named after the Senate. It's a pity I couldn't have kept the two of these closer together. But uh, I'm going to name this building after another friend of mine. Math plays. Math was streaming Cyberpunk until he ran into some PC problems which have been sorted out. So hopefully we are going to see his return to streaming shortly. I'll put a link to his Twitch and his YouTube below in the description. Please do go and check them out. So I'm going to call this brothel Math's Menagerie. It's where Math Plays goes to play. And it was in Dan Petty Handy, or Dan Petty Handies, that we discovered the location of Nora Quinn. <clears throat> sorry, Frank Quinn is doing tremendous work. She discovered the location of... Maggie Dyers, or Frank Dyers, uh, safe house, in two episodes back. And now she's discovered uh, Saltus's safe house. So we can view his safe house. We can see where that is. The plans for Saltus's Death Star. They were in Maff's Menagerie all along. Lads, look at... Lads. Uh, where the hell is this? Where the hell is this? Right next door to Irish Sweepstakes, which was a casino we took uh, on the last episode, if I am correct. So he's way up there in near Southside. He's actually not too far from us. Where are we now? Where are we now? We're all up in a completely different part of the town. Oh wait, no. Near Southside and near Northside are different. 
they're different. But we know where Saltus is. I'm not going to take him on immediately. We need to get some money together to finish off a mission. Probably, we need, I think we're going to wait until uh, Clyde comes back. We're going to wait until Clyde comes back. Hopefully we can dis discover one or two more safe houses until then. But uh, Saltus, I'd say we're coming for you next. Nora Quinn, due to her high morale, is now tolerant. Is that like alcohol tolerance? Nora Quinn is loyal to you and happy with your leadership. You can now hire her friend, Harry Adams. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and we can hire a monks, so we can hire them because they are happy with us. Who oh, is this um, one of Reina's gang? Are suspicious with us. Shane's Sin Soldiers. Eddie has gotten himself a talent. I'm literally just on a walk around to see what's up in this corner. A rapid reload. No longer consumes an action point. I don't think he's ever used his pistol. If attacked, automatically return fire. Perfect. That sounds that sounds good for Eddie. On rail. Man, Eddie. We have a prosperity change in Chinatown. Uh, they prefer premium over whiskey. I'm not producing either of the two of those. Again, we need some money to finish off this um, this mission. Uh, they're requesting a trade. Uh, a thousand for a hundred bottles of top shelf. I think I'm actually producing some, some top shelf now. Sure, sounds like a deal. I'm basically going to just start producing a ton of whiskey. And... Selling it to the minor factions, the ones that I don't wipe out. Uh, rumor has it that the Janas have gone to war with the Northside mob. Again, look at this. When did this happen? When did this happen? Going back over the videos, the time that we were at war with the Northside mob. I was occupied running around a corner trying to ambush somebody and suddenly there was a pop-up. You are now neutral with the Northside mob. But I wasn't looking in that direction. It's just like what I was talking about at the start of this episode when Frankie, um, a cat has nine lives, popped up on screen. But I wasn't focusing on that. My attention wasn't drawn towards that. I was focusing on the guy who was who was preparing to shoot Frankie. So the shotgun blast went off. And then Frankie gains health from being shot. That's what I saw. I did not see a pop-up. You are now neutral with Saltus. We're not a war with Saltus anymore. Okay. The Janas have declared war on me. I'm counting on you to stay true to your word and help me fight them. At the very start of this episode, when I loaded the game, Dean was offering me something. It wasn't a non-aggression pact or an alliance. I think it was a business arrangement. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm not going to address this at the start of the episode. Um, yeah, do you know what? We've just joined the Janas in a war against Saltus. We're now going to join Dean in a war against the Janas. Let's see if they have a large brewery that we can take. Cyril's delighted anyway, that's the main thing. So, it looks like Reyna is the only person in this entire game that has a large brewery. The Janas have nothing, so we're just going to start taking a couple of random territories off of them of course. in near Northside. Come here to me. Oh. <laughs> now Frankie. We need to get some armor piercing we need an armor piercing come on oh, look at this Frank gets himself a kill I think Frank like went down an alleyway looking for Hooch while uh, while everybody else was was right celebrating way. there at the end because he was still off in the distance. Your man on the ground is still being poisoned. 
even though he's dead. Well, these are now looking like uh, slightly better guards than we faced against a lot of... Um, uh, what's his name? Oh, they have special weapons. Or not special weapons, but special bullets. Again, I've, I haven't found any in loot, and I haven't found any in the black market. So we've been kind of unlucky so far. Sure thing. I'm gonna <clears throat> batter you. <clears throat> We'll swap out. We'll see if we can take him out. Cyril. I mean, <clears throat> sorry, no, force of habit. I think Cyril's becoming contagious. The worst thing is that these guys, the civilians will kind of light up. They're not even civilians. It's just the barman for this place is lighting up red as well. And I keep thinking, oh, if I could do a shotgun blast and hit the two of them. Uh, could I do a shotgun? Well, that's not one of... I was going to say, could I do a shotgun blast and hit that person as well? Looks like we'll just have to do this. Bad time to start running, lads. Bad time to start running. Where's, where's the other person? Uh, I suppose, yeah, take him out. Oh, interesting. Uh, Cyril is worried about his lover. She doesn't love you, Cyril. She doesn't love you. He's worried. He's not worried enough to go into hair trigger, though. Oh, there's somebody else. How long has he been there? Run and gun. Oh, Cyril. See if we had slightly more powerful rounds. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Oh yeah! Signed. Victory! Great. Uh, no, that's not great. That's not great at all. Because now we have nobody to um to do any healing. We got a cotton padded vest. We'll take over and keep it as a speakeasy. Do you know, I can't actually remember if I got his name spelled correctly here, but I'm now too distracted by the fact that Cyril's just standing there pretending he's holding a gun. That lad, oh lord, he's had a bad day. But my man over here is just looking directly at the camera. So this is, I don't know, this is the weirdest thing I've ever had to look at. I'm going to name this building... As a parting, a parting gesture from uh, from Nora McCray McCree. I've always wanted Moira in Overwatch to be given a voice line if she's in a team with McCree that she would say McCree McCree sarcastically. I'm gutted. I'm devastated that that hasn't been added. So it's kind of McCree my heart. That's kind of just a like saying my love or my pet or something like that. But uh, Moira in a sarcastic way saying McCree McCree. That's what I'd love to see sometime. But uh, yeah, Nora. Delusional. From the loss of blood as she's been wheeled out of the place. This is what she said to Cyril. And he's not he's not taking it well. See, they're all rushing to see her. Because she's the only doctor that we have. And they're, they're all afraid that she's injured. And somebody's drunk. Take 
and then there was five. Oh, we got a vest in the last place, and I forgot to give it to uh, to McCarlin. I'll have to Let's do that go. this time. Will do. Not a bother. Oh, Cyril's worried, and he's hitting the hooch. This gang is being ripped apart. It's telling me there's... Where's the other? Are they all here? Well, there's two of them. Look, we'll just start... We'll just start whacking away. Sure thing. Yeah, we're going to need an armor-piercing. Come on. Come here to me, bitch. <laughs> I don't think she'll be able to take him out with anything. You see, I said she was lifting the lead leg. Now she's not. She's leading with the left leg, but she's lifting the trailing leg, and she's kind of spinning around on the spot. She's losing all momentum. She should be blocking with the uh, with the left leg. She is blocking with the left leg, but it's it's the lifting of the right and the spin. She's she's losing momentum and she's falling forward, so she's throwing at the ground. Very bad technique. We have to we have to have a talk with our trolls coach. Shit. Now Frank isn't in a spot to do anything. Frank. I never thought this day would come when Cyril would have to show you. Now, I've actually been doing a terrible job with Cyril. I should be marking targets and then shooting, but look, I don't know what to say. Like, did Frank just climb into that car and start shouting from there? Frank is going to get that revolver. I don't know who's going to get the dynamite, and... Um, we also have to give him a vest before we before we go into the, the speakeasy. So, Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, even though she's injured herself, she has started reading up on medical treatments, so we can give her Miracle Elixir. A target character temporarily, temporarily gains 1 AP and plus 100 HP for 2 rounds. I wonder if they have 2 action points. Does that bring them up to 3? Or does it kind of renew an action point? It'll be fun to see. Well, it's going to be a long time before we see. Oh, that's amazing. Nora, don't talk. Don't talk, pet. You're injured. And the other galoot. Where is he? There he is. He's back in 13 days? 14 days? I saw it somewhere. Maybe it's longer. I have no idea. I don't know where do you actually go to check when he's back. He'll come back at some stage. He'll come back when he his morale is low from not killing people. You're gonna pay. Move it. Fantastic. I don't think we fought in a bar that looks like this before. This is an interesting one. Where the hell is the first guy? Right here. I think we will get Frankie to here, we'll say. Huh. Out of movement? Are you serious? In your face, you fucking gobshite. What we could do... Uh, Frank, I should have probably put him in cover. That might have been a good idea. McCurlin, will you actually get a kill for once? I think that's his first kill. Oh, 
that doesn't give him all that much more room. Or range, I mean. That was probably... I should have probably kept him behind that chair. So he's now gotten an achievement, or not an achievement, but um, an upgrade with the American Wake. Whoever's behind... Let's go. I, I bet he won't even come out of cover. I bet he won't even come out of cover to make things worse. No. God damn it. Frank, I don't know what to say. We messed up, Frank. I'm sorry. Some excitement at last. I know what's happening. Frank constantly has a bottle of whiskey in his mouth, and he's shouting through the bottle. So, Frank has marked somebody. I might just pull Frank back. Uh, so he's put a mark on them. That's going to drop their defenses and make them a bit easier for people to hit. I should have been doing this all along with Cyril. Like we're just giving Frankie another kill. Yeah! That's what I'm yeah. fucking talking about. Fantastic. Victory. We take the loot. We'll take over. We'll keep it as a speakeasy. And you know what? While we're on a trend of naming speakeasies and brothels after people that I know or people that I watch on Twitch and YouTube, we'll name this one the Thigh High Club after Socks Way Up. Uh, he streams predominantly city skylines. I know he uh, took a look at the uh, the Paris Architect game there recently, but you can check him out. I'll put a link to his YouTube up in the top right-hand corner. So if you're interested in some city skylines, check him out, or even come down to the Thigh High Club, or even check out his own Thigh High Club, which is in his, uh, his Discord. So we will... No, uh, they're not, they're not City Builder fans, no. They're out. They're probably going to Maths Menagerie. Where are you? So here is, just as everyone ran out the door and headed for Maths Menagerie, uh, one of your, your guys tells you that Reagan's Colts have approached Nora Quinn. They've gone down to the hospital. They've been talking to her about a dental plan, health insurance, probably after she got injured. Uh, Nora is loyal. Uh, she is going nowhere. Then you hear how much Reagan's Colts were offering. A hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, so we could tell Nora to find the guy she talked to and shoot him in public. Send a message. We could persuade Frank... Uh, if they make me that offer, they can have her. Now, the crew morale goes down four. If it succeeds. They tried, they failed. 150,000. Because we're on our way to hiring Dr. Natalie Warren. You know, I think we're making we're making enough money. We do need Nora. Well, I won't say we need Nora, because the other thing is if we get rid of Nora, we can hire Dale Mahan. We'll probably be getting rid of Nora anyway at some point in time. God, I'm really torn by this. This is actually the first decision that's kind of made me think in any way, make, shape, or form. Like, Liam... Just, no, go away. Don't care about you, Liam. This one is actually making me think. The other thing is, what will Cyril do? 
The other thing is, when we come for Reagan's Colts eventually, because we will be, will Nora Quinn be a part of their gang? Only one way to find out. Success. Reagan's Colts accepts your offer, and Nora Quinn leaves to join Reagan's Colts, saying, I was loyal to you. I thought you'd be loyal to me, but I'll be seeing you again real soon. Frankie Donovan is loyal to one thing and one thing only, and that is absolutely nothing. Not even his wallet. No, not, no, not even that. He would betray his wallet in a minute. He wouldn't even betray it, he just wouldn't care. But Nora is leaving and taking back her stuff. Oh no! She's taken uh, a single action revolver. I hope to Christ she left the sniper rifle. So we are outside the Pi High Club with a ton of money in our pocket. Um, well, Frank is actually a bit injured. I'll get Nora to... Oh. <clears throat> uh, so we're standing in the pouring rain. It's not washing away the blood. And I didn't think we would be able to do this for a very long time. But here is Frank. The next Irish-American mobster up from him is Dale Mahan. How are you doing? Dale is a hailed veteran of the Great War, specialising in both expert-level demolition work and heavy binge drinking. He single-handedly demolished an enemy bridge, or an enemy brigade, with a mortar, an act for which he received a bridge, I think would have made more sense, um, received several commendations. The constant explosions and gunfire took their toll on Dale's mental health, sadly, and his lust for drinking did not diminish. We should not be putting this man in a gang with Frank McCurlin. He'll never back down from a fight, but don't be surprised if his fingers get trigger-happy. So he dropped out of school and struggled through some hard times. Dale has become angry. Oh, you'll fit in well with this gang. Uh, even if his faith is still intact, he has no trust in anyone but God. They won't trust a single soul. Uh, you'll fit in well here. You'll fit in well. What's his effects? Explosive Ordnance Training. Using explosives no longer ends your turn. So this is the man that we're going to be putting a ton of, of explosives into his pockets. Uh, we will hire Dale. Thanks a million. I think I got the achievement for having hired. I thought we'd have to have Nora in the gang as well. But I've now hired somebody of every single uh, class in the game. So he's a demolitionist. We will confirm. What's he taken? Uh, break shot. Explosive ordnance training. Double shot. I would rather... I'd rather have taken this. Shrapnel bomb. I would rather... I would definitely have taken that. Like double shot. Throw a time bomb. I'd rather that. Time bomb? As in does it like alter time around the area it explodes in? Uh, bunker down, shotgun training, chain reaction. Your explos uh, explosives now have a 5% chance to trigger an additional explosion on any character carrying explosives. Sure. Oh, thanks be to God. There you go. Now, uh, so we'll close that. There is Ray Monks, who Cyril now hates. Cyril probably hates us as well. Um, we have... Nobody else. We're going to go up, up to Bugs Moran, like I was talking in the last episode. Uh, unsure what Moran's background is, but I said that it was my intention that we would hire him. Now, as you can see, we're making a grand total of 411 per week. He's going to cost 1,200 and he's going to cost 31,000 up front. Uh, the other person, the only remaining person then that we have to hire is a Dr. Natalie Warren to replace Nora. 63,000, but we need another 70-ish uh, notoriety. And the only other Irish person then on this entire board is Chris Paul Gregson, who will not work with um, Clyde Malone. And the same, the opposite way around. I don't think we're going to get anything again about Clyde 
uh, being a potential mole, siphoning off money. So it looks like we are never going to get poor old Crispo Gregson. Hey. Hey, Crispo. So. How's it going? George, yourself and Frank, you're not going to make great friends. We're going to give you a fancy uh, gun as well. We're going to hire him. So where to first? And for Moran. Or Moran. Rapid reload. Sniper. Natalie will probably be our sniper once we once we get to her. Uh, return fire. If attacked, automatically return fire with your secondary weapon. Sounds good. Fucking a. And what does George already have? Uh, ret uh, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Mark target. No, he has this one. Can opener. Fantastic, yes. So that'll be used to knock armor off of some of the characters that we're coming up against some of the um some of the really strong uh armored gangsters guile he also has run and gun which if we give him uh thompson will be handy i don't don't think his movement is great movement of six but well, frankie's movement is seven cyril's is four ass ah, cyril maybe that's the amount of squares they can move probably I'm going to check now quickly about distributing Nora's equipment to uh, to these people, uh, some armor and stuff like that, and then we're going to take our new expanded gang. We could very well go after Saltus. We'll do we'll do one attack, and I think we might go after Saltus in the next episode. So letting go of Nora, it meant that we. Got a ton of money. I've been able to hire two gangsters. I've been able to upgrade my breweries so that they're producing everything. I now have a, at least one brewery producing every single level of alcohol. I have one on whiskey. I have one on premium. I think I have one or two on top shelf and a couple then on rack. None on swill. But uh, worst comes to worst, we'll be able to we'll be able to sell that stuff off for big money. I've managed to upgrade uh, Ermwind and Wicca to the top level of games. I've made big improvements around the place. This has been a big, big, big achievement. It's fantastic, but we forget about the people that this hurts. And that's Cyril. Poor Cyril. He was in love with Nora. And now, she's gone, she's joined another gang. They're going to have to fight. There's going to be a dramatic battle between Cyril and Nora at some stage. The last time that Cyril saw her was as she was being carted out of McCray and McCree's. And the next time he will see her will be in a fight to the death. We have to make it up to Cyril somehow. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to go out and we're going to buy him a little party. We're going to buy him a golden Tommy gun. Um, I think you get this um, for free with the deluxe package. So if you if you get the deluxe package DLC, uh, you get this weapon at the very start. Otherwise, you can acquire it through the game for twenty thousand. We want to buy it. So it is a. I think it's described a legendary item. And if we come to our gangsters. Where's he gone to? I've given Frankie uh, Shatter Rounds. So they're going to knock a point of armor off. So he has the Shatter Rounds for the American Wake. And here is Cyril. Currently equipped with an MP18. So if we look at the base damage. Uh, 14, 16 and 8 for a crit chance. And we're going to give him. 15, 17, 16 for a crit chance. Cyril, I'm sorry. Sorry about your girlfriend. She didn't love you, but I know you thought she did. So I'm sorry about your imaginary girlfriend. Here's here's a golden gun. I hope you don't have to kill her with it. So we need to finance this ridiculous mob. My god, look at that. We need to, to finance this crew somehow, so let's take more buildings. <laughs> Uh, Cyril has been pushed fairly far down the list now. 
Uh, we could take the armor off of him and give him... What would we be giving him instead of armor? The pocket watch, which would increase his movement. But Cyril is a bit wake. We've, uh, we've had this debate before. Cyril is a bit wake. If they hit, it'll kill her. Right away. I'm gonna break your face in. Just about. Because <laughs> this is what I wanted to check. So, yep, we can see that a point of armor is flashing. In your face, you fucking gobshite. And it's gone. Well, let's see. First day on the job. Can Dale get himself? His double shot. So he has double fire and double shot. Okay, maybe that is interesting because it only... It only spins one AP, but it doesn't... It's basically he can move and do double fire. That's basically what double shot is. Yeah! That's what I'm That's talking, about, talking about, baby! Yeah! Fantastic! Victory! Frank is just still way, way off of the background. I will take the loot. Uh, where is this now? Outside Dan Petty Handies. We will auto resolve that. That's we're not gonna. Should have probably resolved it just to make sure that we actually dealt some damage. They're going to go in there. Sure thing. Um, there you go. Uh, what's this now? They're attacking your guards outside. Screw you, Saltus. I'll fight this one just to see if we can deal enough damage so that when they go in, they'll be some way weakened. Ah, pity. Nearly, but he's going to be far too weak to actually go into the building. So she did great work. Look at this for a crew wandering into a brothel. Okay, then. Now to try and figure out where the hell we go. We'll get Frankie to wander into this guy. On it. Come here to me, that bitch. <laughs> I'd say an overwatch in this direction is about as much as he can do. He does technically have a line of sight on a Jaina guard over there. I will get Dale up here. I don't know, is that blocking Frankie's line of sight? I don't think so. Ah, oh, Dale. A deal. There's no need to be like that. So oh, there is George. I'm going. Not really. Weak. Maybe if I'd gone in the opposite direction and tried to put an overwatch on. But do no merciful damage to poor old Frank. Yeah, that's my 
What's he fucking talking about? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Victory. Frank, nobody can hear you. We're going to take over. Keep it as a brothel. Confirm. I was just about to go into the list of names to uh, to check, but I decided not to bother. They were suggesting the cozy spot, so I've changed it to the cozy kitchen, which was the name of a brothel in the Monto after the establishment of the Irish Free State from the 1920s onwards. So there was this big uh, morality campaign after the establishment of the Irish Free State, but there were a couple of regions in the Monto that continued to operate by uh, paying quite often members of Ungor the Shiakona to kind of look the other way and the cozy kitchen was one of them so um, it just seems though that name popped up I'll uh, I'll keep it as the cozy kitchen so the Janas are heading inside Dan Petty Handies and screw you Saltus so where are we starting this is uh, screw you, Saltus. So, I'm going to auto-resolve. I think we should be able to to win that. And... What about the other one? Does it not... I thought he was heading inside two of them. And right beside the cozy kitchen is a... Speakeasy. Gotcha. Time to get to work. That it is, George. That it is. It. Come here to me, that <laughs> bitch. <and I'm... laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about, about, baby. Oh yeah. Oh, happy Victory. Day time. Just Frank, way in the background. Will that'll never get old. Everyone else shouting at the top of their lungs, and Frank is like halfway down the street. Uh, Frank's actually also badly injured. And we have nobody to cure him, so we might have to go back to the, um, right the safe house for the first time ever, just to get him in there and get him healing up a bit. You're gonna pay. Hello, idiots. Where the hell is everyone? Oh, they're not in great places at all for me. Ah, uh, lads. Right away. Come here to me. <laughs> yeah, we've no great. No great anything. Uh, bring him to here. Run out Overwatch on. I'd say it's just Overwatch the living daylights out of him. So you say, Eddie. So you say. Gonna hammer you down. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Fantastic. Victory. That was the best one yet. Just Frank. I I don't know if this is coming across. If you can if you can hear. That's what I'm talking about. But he's just way off in the distance. Uh, obviously, there's something up with the sound files and the the volume is coming through lower than um than it's meant to be. But it's it's hilarious. It's hilarious. I just like to imagine he's. Just, he's gone. As soon as the battle ended, everyone else is out here. Frank has gone down here, looking looking into these kegs. We will keep it as a speakeasy. This will tell you how badly I am running out of names. 
I'm simply going to call this bar Franks. Who are we naming it after? Frank Donovan? Frank Reagan? Frank McCarlin? Who knows? Who knows? Probably Frank. Yeah, we need to do something about him. So, after all of that, we have managed to completely push the Janas out of near Northside. Now, they are doing something interesting. I won't say interesting. But they have a couple of people looking around the Gambler McCabe's. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do something different. I've split the gang in two. So I have no idea who I have here. Uh, Frankie, Dale, and Frank, who's a bit wounded, a bit injured. And I'm going to have them up out of this taxi rank. Does the game immediately start? It doesn't. So they've popped out of that taxi rank. Fantastic. I'm going to zoom back out. And they're going to hit across and attack those guys. I'm going to take the rest of the gang. I'm going to take the rest of the gang. And where are we going to go with you guys? I don't think... The Janus have anybody snooping around here. They don't. So we're going to have you guys pop out. Besides... After midnight. And let's see if we can actually start uh, splitting up the gang. So I'm going to have these guys attack after midnight. And it's going to become a lot more finicky. It would be handy if there was a way to, uh, to kind of manage gangs a bit easier. When I say manage gangs, I mean kind of managing the way I've broken up the, the troops this way. But um, we're seeing that... Uh, that the likes of Cyril, he's not getting a lot of a lot of hits off anymore because he's just so far down the list, and there are so few people to attack. Uh, so yeah, I'm basically going to split up the gang and see if we can do cause double the trouble. It's the first time that I'm not opening up with a. Uh, come on, somebody getting a come on to the head. Now, it does mean that the gang will take increased damage. Because now the initiative is higher. These two guys are going to are gonna attack before... Um, they're going to attack before... Any other members of my group. So usually these two would be dead by now. Oh, George, no! <laughs> George turns around and he's like, what? I don't see anything. Teach him a lesson, George. Now, this is... this. Look at it. Oh, look at it. Glitter. Doesn't he look snosta? Doesn't he look snosta with his machine gun? This is really the only reason that I broke up these two gangs. I wanted to see Cyril use this. Cyril, 24 HP. That's all we want. No more. Merciful hour. That thing is loud. Boys, oh boys, there's a rattle off of that thing. Cyril will be shaking the poor man. That's what I'm talking yes. about, baby. Signed. Victory. And of course, we get to hear the beautiful melodic cacophony a lot clearer now with less people so we will take that we'll have to pause i'd say yeah it's gonna be kind of weird now hovering back and forth um let's let's see how this goes so these guys are eyeing up the come on in and um awesome wave blues so frankie Gobshite. Oh, and I forgot we actually ambushed them, didn't we? Oh, yeah. This is good. Um. 
Oh yeah, I'll have I'll have Dale delay his turn. And let's see with McCurlin. No. I won't say it was a waste, but it wasn't great. So I think I actually need to give Frank a more powerful... I think I need to give him the actual Tommy gun. I think that's his starting Thompson. Just hear him way off in the background. Who do you think is in is in charge of the second gang? That's the really awkward thing now is I don't know how you can actually um, move between gangs. I have to pretty much zoom out onto the world map, find my other gang, and um, and select them that that way. I don't think there's any way to actually um, to to click on them. We could give him. Ah, uh, no, you can't. No, McCarlin has to have McCarlin has to have a Tommy gun. Uh, this will deal less damage when used in kind of single fire mode, single target mode. But hopefully, it will deal more in uh, in sweep attacks. So we'll see how this works out for him. So it is a bit finicky having to go back and forth between everything. But I did manage to find where the rest of the gang was. They're outside a giant brothel. Giant brothel. Lads, you probably shouldn't have that many windows on a brothel. So there's a sizable gang. Oh, don't make me regret this. It's saying that the balance of power is 46. Now, it'll be interesting to see just how dependent we are on Frankie Donovan. How dependent have we been on Frankie Donovan all along? Getting her into cover would have been a good idea. Or of course we could. Oh no, it's it's um I thought she was still moving. It's um it's Eddie's turn. Who's moving next? Off in that direction. Dire Straits does not have a great uh, Overwatch range. I didn't even spot there was a guy right next to us. I thought that was Eddie. Eddie, what are you doing? Uh, 100... So we could take out this guy up here, but, um... I think we start we start getting these guys ready for Cyril. Or for George. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Just about. And we won't kill either of them. We definitely won't kill him. Ah, shit, they got me. Uh, George, it's fine. It's fine. Stop it. Cyril, can you can you fix this mess? Probably not. Of course, he can't uh, sweep now, or can he? Can somehow. Interesting. Yep. 
could hardly get a shot off then, could she? It was worth a try. That's a terror that it wouldn't kill. Well, George is bleeding out. It's fine, we'll get Nora to... <clears throat> oh, Cyril's gone mad, he's gone ballistic. Right. Cyril has his hand gone out. Jez gonna have to use her health kit on George. Hundred percent. Where can we get her in cover? Here, I think. Now, you know what? He'd better heal himself and get him into cover. Dear God, George, don't die. I think that was a good idea. I've given him that uh, that bit of a, a health boost. I'm running gone. Where can we get him to? I don't know if he's going to have protection at an angle. He's still worried about Nora. Still worried about Nora, the fool. He can't um, change his weapon. That guy's doing a good chunk of damage. Fair play to him. Is George dead? So Jez is panicking because George is dead. To, um, that's two uh, medkits wasted. I needed those medkits. Jez has regained her composure. Yes! Victory! Well, god damn it. After staying in cover, Eddie Callahan has gotten some stuff. We have um, gotten some money from Independence and the Jenna crime family. Gotten high, some high impact rounds. George would have loved those. George would have loved those rounds. George would have loved those rounds. We'll take over. We're going to make it a brewery. Why didn't Nora heal George during... Oh, yeah, we... I had a couple of other names that I was going to call this place, but I think George's rest is only appropriate. It's a, it's a large building. It's going to serve to fulfill this mission for the Canadian Maple Association. Sorry, George. So with George Bugs Moran dead, Dino Banyan has decided to come and laugh in our face. He's no longer paying us the uh, the pittance in protection money that he was paying us. Um, we've suddenly started making a ton of money. What's after... Oh yeah, we're not paying George anymore. So yeah, in, in this timeline, it's Moran that died and O'Banion that gets angry. 
And then we have, uh, what's this? An attack. I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, auto resolve that. That's outside the casino in Marino. There was a victory. An MP18 submachine gun. George would have loved that. An axe. A hammer. George would have loved those. So outside the come on in, Frankie Donovan sees Cyril and Eddie and Jez coming around the corner. Frankie gave Cyril the responsibility of taking, uh, I don't know what the hell, he was de defending some areas down in the, um, where was that, near, uh, near south side, taking over a brewery. Gave Cyril some responsibility, and Cyril comes back with a gangster less. I don't think George managed to kill a single person. We will go and talk to our Canadian Maple Association contact. We will finish this mission. Maybe this wasn't a great idea because there is a lot of wars going on, or a lot of a lot of battles. Do you think Cyril was getting a, big, a bit big for his boots with his with his shiny gold machine gun? And Frankie was like, fine, you think you can do what I'm doing? Go way off, so. And take over a brewery. And Cyril was like, fine, I will. I forgot about this guy. And uh, yeah, now Cyril is coming back with his, with his tail, his golden tail between his legs. We'll see what uh, our contact has to say. Many thanks, Frankie Donovan. Your assistance in procuring this building has been outstanding. We need to get your brewery up to our standards. So we've sent in a few extra guards and some of our boys from across the border to help you with the brewing process. We'll speak again soon. Oh god, I thought I thought we were going to be coming to the end of this mission. 608 notoriety. We are quite close to being able to hire a doctor again. It looks like we need one. There's a doctor of sorts. Doctor who likes to punch things in the face. There are a couple of positions in the game that you can appoint people to. Uh, I think we already appointed Cyril as our advisor. And I'm now going to appoint an underboss. Now, leadership is the skill that's best used for an underboss. And I know that somebody has 89 leadership. Um, 83. We can't obviously appoint Frankie. 87. I know somebody has higher leadership. Oh god, that was George. I was going to appoint George as our underboss, but then he got his head blown open. So, after coming back from his injury... Clyde is going to be made an underboss. And what this is going to do is it's going to decrease our wage bill. People will basically fight and die for us uh, cheaper. Sure, let's get on with it. That should have been George. So there in the background you can see George's rest. I've taken the entire gang down to near Southside, so Cyril can explain to Frankie what happened. So we can see there, on the top right hand corner of the actual gang list is a big skull and crossbones over George Bugs Moran, because he's after going off to, uh, to UCC to study medicine. <clears throat> yeah, that's where, that's where he is. I don't know what to say. I think on the next episode I'm going to continue this fight with the Janas until we can discover where their safe house is and then attack Saltus because we found his safe house first of all so we'll attack Saltus um we're what we're 625 to get Natalie Warren so I think before we attack Saltus we're definitely going to have to get a doctor again and keep the gang together Cyril can just look at his golden Thompson gun. If he doesn't get to use it, at least everyone stays alive. 
Frankie Donovan's armor-piercing come on will keep everyone alive. That's all that we need to focus on. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode, as always. I'm not too sure what way the future ones are going to go, as they're going to be, like I've been saying, going to be very combat-heavy. And we're, uh... We're hiring, or killing, all of the Irish gangsters, Irish and Irish-American gangsters that they are. Like I said, there's actually only two more to hire, but we probably won't be seeing Crispo Gregson. And you know what? That's probably for the best, considering George... I don't think George even got a kill. I think he was in two combats before we got him killed. So he was basically very expensive. I think he cost like 30,000. So Nora is in hospital somewhere. Laughing away at us. Plotting her revenge. So in future, I might uh, I might kind of skip some of the combats and things like that. We're going to fo focus on taking out Soltis. Then we're going to focus on taking out the Janas. And uh, I think I'm going to predominantly focus on keeping on keeping my gangsters alive. Uh, do, if you've been enjoying this episode and the ones that have come before, leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. Type an F in the comments for George. Because if you don't, Frank McCurlin is going to call around your house and he's going to start shouting at you. He's going to be calling to you, but he won't He won't come into the room that you're in to call you. He'll be in the, the room next door and you'll be shouting back at him, What? What do you want? Just come in here and tell me what you want. But he won't. And you'll go into the room to him, but he'll have moved into another room. And he's just all... You can hear him, but he's just always out of audible range. That's what'll happen to you. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I'll talk to you again on the next one.